Hey, it's Izzy and today we're going to be talking about self-confidence and recovery and all sorts of things. So since my eating disorder story video, which was quite a while ago now, almost a year I think, so many of you guys have requested a video about recovery. I feel like I talk about it so often that you guys would be sick of me talking about it by now, but apparently you're not. So. I put together six things that really helped me during my eating disorder recovery. If you want to hear about my eating disorder, I'll link my video down below, the original one. Because I feel like this isn't really something that's talked about enough online. And mental health is really, really important. And I think that everybody at some point in their life struggles with mental health. And I guess I want to be one of the people that talks about it. I want to start off the video by saying that the most important, my number one, the only, you take away one thing from this video, the only thing I want you to know is that if you think you have a problem, you should get help. You should get serious help. I don't want you to just self-diagnose and like watch this video and think that things are okay because I couldn't have done it by myself because it's a very serious thing and you know, that's really important. You need to be able to talk to somebody. You need to be able to seek help if you need help. But after you've done that and like you're in the process of recovery or you're coming out of recovery, these are just some things that I've kind of learnt going along. And you know, for the sake of online transparency, which has been a very, very popular topic lately, I wanted to tell you guys that I am not perfect. Things are not always great. I still struggle sometimes and that's totally okay and totally normal. I've still got doctor's appointments that I go to. I still get blood tests and things like that. And it's been, I think, three years since my diagnosis and this is still happening. It's okay to not be okay. Um, I suppose that's going to be my first tip. I did FBT, which is family based therapy or the Maudsley method. It is a recovery process that came out of England, I'm pretty sure, and it's relatively new. So I didn't do anything by myself, really. It was all very calculated. I was seeing a therapist every single week alongside doctors and all that sort of thing. After I came out of it and I was discharged, it was the best feeling in the world. I was so, so, so happy. And I honestly thought that I was invincible and I could do this all by myself and I no longer needed anybody's help. And no, I don't want to hear your opinions. Thank you very much. But it's such an ongoing process. A few months in, I felt myself pulling back a little bit and kind of falling into old habits. And I want you to know that it's okay to not be okay. You need to tell somebody if you feel that way. You can ask for help four months in or four years in because it's an ongoing thing. Which brings me to point number two, recognizing or knowing when to recognize that things weren't right, what kind of thinking is okay and what kind of thinking isn't okay. Recognizing that and then acting upon that are really important things. Say you're like living alone or you've moved out and gone to college. You just need to be aware when you're not okay. You're not always going to have people there to help you. You just got to watch it all the time and be okay to talk about it. Number three, your number one priority in life will always be taking care of yourself. For a while there, I was thinking that taking care of myself was like doing some yoga and like putting on a face mask and having a lazy day or whatever. But when you're recovering, looking after yourself means eating enough, checking in with your mental health and talking to people, having a little bit extra food if you feel like you haven't eaten enough or having blood tests, checking in with that sort of thing, looking after yourself when you get sick, making sure that you don't lose too much weight. That's what looking after yourself really means. So look after yourself, please. Number four, I think you are different. You know, not everybody has to understand that and not everybody will. I've had people say really ignorant and stupid things to me because they don't understand and you just kind of have to brush it off because you know what's best for you and the people who know you well know what's best for you. It's okay to be a little bit different and it's totally normal for people, unfortunately, not to understand that. Five, this is something that I talked about in my original video, but cut the crap. 
Anything that doesn't make you feel good, anything that gives you negative or triggering experiences or feelings, just get rid of it. You don't need it. You don't have time for it. You know, there are so many positive and amazing things out there for you that you don't need to waste time with things that don't make you feel good. For example, I don't ever look at Fitspiration or anything like that. I unfollowed all of those accounts that I was following. I don't talk to people who make me feel bad about myself. I got rid of like toxic friends and things like that. So cutting the crap was one of the best things that I did during recovery. And I still, I still don't follow anything like that. So if you don't like something, if something's triggering to you, you don't need a reason for it. Um, there are so many different ways that people are triggered. There are so many like variations of eating disorders and subcategories and larger categories and all sorts of things. So if you don't like something, you don't need a reason to not like it. Just cut it out. Number six is love yourself as often and as much as you can. Self-confidence is definitely something that I still have problems with. I think that almost everybody has things that they're insecure about. I thought this was really, really lame when somebody first suggested it to me, but positive affirmations are really good things. I think one of my doctors a long time ago, she gave me this, and it's like a little box of positive affirmations that have just been printed and cut out. More loved than you can imagine. You are awesome. You know, you can get through this. I am in charge of how I feel today. All sorts of things that sound really cheesy and annoying, but are really helpful. On days that I was really feeling bad, I would just pull these out and kind of read through them. At some one point, I had them stuck around my mirror and around my room and in the bathroom and all sorts of places. Like, believe it or not, after a while, seeing these things really does help and looking in the mirror, and if you don't like something, try and focus on something else. If you don't like the way that, you know, like for instance, your legs look, maybe, you know, your makeup looks on fleek, or you like the way that your hair looks. Just finding something that is awesome, loving yourself, positive affirmations, all these sorts of things, they usually come after recovery, but they're an intrinsic part of being a happy person. You deserve the whole world and you deserve to live it to the fullest. And you can do that after recovery. The world opens up and is so, so incredible and amazing. I hope this helped. Yeah, if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up or share your story in the comments. If you want to, you can email me or message me on Tumblr. I love you all so very much and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!